Okay, so the evidence is overwhelmingly conclusive. There was absolutely a massive global cataclysm that happened approximately 12,980 years ago that was a total reset button for human civilization. In this video, I'm gonna show you five key pieces of evidence, including core ice sample data taken from both Antarctica and Greenland, soil data taken from the Younger Dryas black mat layer, the unexplainable extinction event of 75% of all mammals in North America and 120 large megafauna, i.e. mammals larger than 100 pounds, that all went extinct at the same period of time, evidence of the sudden and unexplainable end of the last ice age, including a massive 400-foot rise in sea level that happened in a very short period of time, as well as a key piece of evidence that proves that there was an advanced human civilization dating back more than 13,000 years. Yet despite the overwhelming evidence taken from the most recent and technologically advanced scientific analysis ever taken on this subject, it's still not being taught in schools, it's still not printed in the textbooks, and you still won't hear about it from almost anyone in mainstream science. Now let's start with key evidence from the core ice samples taken from Antarctica and Greenland. Both these samples confirm that there was two events, one that happened 12,980 years ago, give or take five years, as well as another one that happened 1,400 years later, or 11,600 years ago, where we saw a few things happen on planet Earth in a very short period of time, including a 400-foot rise in sea level, which happened so rapidly that there's evidence that suggests that it may have raised as much as 30 feet globally in just a 24-hour period, as well as a 15-degree Fahrenheit temperature swing that went from one end of the spectrum to the other in that period of time, most of which happened in just a few cycles of seasons, i.e. a couple years. You know, it's interesting, with all this talk about global warming right now, everyone's fussing over what the effects will be of a three degree Fahrenheit temperature increase. Guys, we're talking about five to six times as much as that. Now the process for getting this data from the core ice samples is very interesting. You can literally see and measure the rise and fall of sea levels from one year to the next. So you're probably asking, what could have caused such an event? Well, the evidence is overwhelming that there was a cosmic collision i.e. a comet or an asteroid hit the North American ice shelf, which at that time was more than two kilometers thick on average. That's more than a mile thick, guys, and in some places more than two miles thick. This cosmic impact would have caused a massive evaporation of a significant portion of the North American ice shelf, not all of it, but enough of it to cause massive flooding, as well as having a significant portion of this ice blasted into the atmosphere only to be rained down in significant proportions around the globe for days and weeks to come. Now, further evidence that supports this cosmic impact includes the Younger Dryas black mat boundary that you can see in these pictures here. And there have been samples taken from dozens of locations across three continents around the world that shows that more than 50 million kilometers, almost a third of the Earth's land mass, was literally covered in two to three inches of nano diamonds, melt glass, iridium, even extraterrestrial helium. <laughs> now these elements are only found from two causes, nuclear blasts and cosmic collisions. However, when you take into account the extraterrestrial helium, as it's called, it's pretty conclusive that it was in fact a cosmic collision. Now at that same exact period of time as we're seeing in the soil samples, there's an unexplainable mass die-off, like I said. 75% of all mammals in North America went extinct in a very short period of time, as well as 120 megafauna, or mammals that are larger than 100 pounds. Many of which, I mean, look at these pictures. Some of these you have never ever seen before. You never knew they existed. They're not covered in the textbooks largely. However, the current explanation by modern science is that, well, apparently humans must have caused the mass extinction that a bunch of primitive hunters and gatherers overkilled and overhunted, and that's why there was this mass die-off. However, there's evidence that contradicts that. For example, there has been mass mortality sites of woolly mammoths. They have found fields of more than 1,000 woolly mammoths, many of which had broken legs as if their body had been blasted over with their legs still standing, and some of which still have food in their mouths. This further validates that there was a sudden and cosmic collision that caused a mass extinction event for so many animals in a short period of time. So if this was possible for the dinosaurs, why wouldn't we think that it's possible to have happened to humans, which we know were alive at that time? Take for example, Gobekli Tepe. Now most people aren't aware of this. It's located in Turkey, not far from Mesopotamia, and it is dated at least to be 11,600 years ago through analyzation of organic matter, pottery, and other elements and artifacts found at that site, 11,600 years ago. Now this site 
is more than 7,000 years older than Stonehenge, which is largely mysterious in a, of itself, right? Not only is it 7,000 years older, it's more than 50 times bigger, as verified through ground penetrating radar, and only 5% of it has been excavated. Now what's particularly interesting about this site isn't just the fact that it's the world's oldest and largest megalithic structure, but the fact that it's the first building or structure to ever align perfectly north and south. Not just in the direction of north and south, but perfect. Now first of all, that's obviously not an accident when you consider just how incredible this site is. That there's 20 to 50 ton pillars that clearly have a celestial meaning to them. However, one of the key pieces of information about Gobekli Tepe is that you could not possibly construct a perfectly north-south facing structure without having advanced astronomical knowledge. So how were they able to have that 11,600 years ago? After all, according to our textbooks, the Sumerians that date back 7,000 years ago are the ones that started all of human civilization. Yet this exceeds that by thousands of years and is completely unexplainable. And by the way, they also have evidence at the site of advanced agriculture that took place at that time. And like I said, advanced agriculture wasn't supposed to have started until the Sumerians. More than 5,000 years later? That's interesting. Now here's a key piece of information you need to take into consideration. Right now, as of today, approximately 40% of the entire world's population lives right on the coast. And more than 75% of the world's population lives within 60 kilometers of a coast. And then when you take into consideration the evidence that show that there was a 400 foot rise in sea level, New York, Washington DC, Los Angeles, Tokyo, Beijing, London, so many other, I mean, I'll have to stop there because I could keep naming them. How many of the world's most advanced civilizations are right on the coast? And what would happen if the sea levels rose as much as 30 feet overnight? Now, that being said, this event wouldn't have made the entire human race go extinct. There would, have, of course, been survivors. And that's where Gobekli Tepe comes in. It suggests that this, that humanity was trying to rebuild itself after this massive cataclysm. And that it shows that 11,600 years ago, was when this site essentially was stopped operating and was buried. And at that same exact period of time, there was another event that caused a massive rise and fall of global sea levels, temperatures, as well as a significant number of animals going extinct all at that same period of time. I don't think that's a coincidence. But many people will argue that, okay, if there was an advanced civilization, where's all the evidence? Where's the metal buildings? Where's the fiber optic cables underground? Where's all this stuff? We're talking over 10,000 years ago? I mean, take into consideration what happens if you leave a car outside for just a few decades. It starts eating itself away. Or even houses, for example. If you don't do a significant restoration project on a house after a few decades, the house will fall in on itself. Now let's compare the Titanic as an example. More than 50,000 tons of steel and iron has been underwater for just more than 100 years, and it's nearly all the way gone. And in another 100 years, it'll almost be non-existent. Now think about what would happen over 10,000 years. The only thing that you would have left is stone. Now something else that we find across the world, across more than six continents and more than 500 cultures, is the story of a flood. Well look at these photos. Now these are from Joe Rogan's podcast with Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock. But what you're seeing here is photos from Montana, Idaho, and Washington that show these absolutely massive ripples. More than 50 feet tall and hundreds of feet long. And absolutely prove and show that there was some sort of massive flood that happened in fact, take a look at this photo. It compares this location in Montana with Niagara Falls. Now in Niagara Falls, approximately 150,000 to 200,000 cubic feet of water spill over the falls every second. However, when you compare this size, it shows that this would have been more than 350 million cubic feet of water per second. Take for example, Lake Tahoe, which is located between California and Nevada. This lake is 22 miles long, 12 miles wide, and up to 1,600 feet deep. And there's enough water in this lake to cover the entire state of California in 14 and a half inches of water. Now consider what would happen if you instantly evaporated or melted a just a portion of the North American ice shelf, like I mentioned earlier, was more than two kilometers thick on average. Wouldn't that explain a massive rise in sea level at that time? We know that at the time of the last ice age, the sea level was 400 feet lower than it is today. So this explains a lot of megalithic structures that have been found off the coast of various regions around the world. So when you connect the dots on these key pieces of evidence, including the ice core samples, the Younger Dryas boundary soil samples, the mass extinction, the rapid ending of the last ice age, the sudden rise of temperatures and the global sea level, 
and Gobekli Tepe, which is completely unexplainable. Anyways, guys, I'm going to close up there. Leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, and be sure to like and subscribe and help me spread the message. Take care, everybody.